That little mini sermon that you got this afternoon was, or this morning, that was free. It didn't cost anything. This one's going to cost extra, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you can make change. <laughs> Have you ever seen anybody try to make change in the offering plate? <laughs> that I mean, that right there is like a skill right there. Right? <laughs> that takes some guts to right there. Be like, well, I wasn't. <laughs> just makes, what are you doing in the offering plate? <laughs> Making change. Uh, that's what, that's why. Oh, you can't do that to him, man. You can't do that to him, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it's the funniest thing. It can be a bug or anything, and that guy will jump a mile in his chair, man. It's just unbelievable. Oh, it's great. I've watched it for years. He does it all the time. I don't mind it at all. I've seen it for a long time. I'm just used to it. It's when somebody else does it and he jumps is what I laugh about. Anyway, but... uh all right, let's get going here. Turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 18. We're going to get moving here quickly. You already wrote it down? Okay. Nate's already memorized the scripture. It's in his head. It's just like... And the light of a, of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Boy, look at that. All nations deceived by sorcery. So this tells us in the end times that, that, that what we're going to see is that the whole world is going to be under this deception. Okay, And part of that deception, I believe, is this psychotropic drugs, these other drugs that are that people are on. I mean, it doesn't have to be psychotropics, but you know what? This is one of the major causes of suicide today. And it's given to people that it's supposed to be an antidepressant that's supposed to, you know, use something chemical to change something that I believe is wrong as spiritual. All right? And they're trying to fix with drugs something that is wrong spiritually with somebody. And you can't fix that with drugs. You ever know people that they get discouraged or depressed? And, you know, before they didn't go to a doctor, what they turn to a bottle, right? And they would just drink themselves to sleep or drink themselves to death, right? Well, now we got it to where basically all that we do is just go to a doctor and he, he prescribes you some drugs for that depression or whatever that you're in. And you take those drugs until either something bad happens to you or you do something bad. Or, you know, in, in other cases, you basically, or if you mix alcohol with those things and you end up dying or killing yourself or overdosing on drugs. And it's an epidemic in this country especially, and we are the major pusher of it. So we've already talked about in the first message about those real sorcerers, okay, who they are, and those, those drug dealers, so to speak. Who are the real drug dealers? You know, if the war on drugs was ever turned in the direction it was supposed to be turned or it should be turned, I don't think you'd have as many deaths in America as you have, to, as you, as you have today. I don't think you'd have as many things going uh, bad today as you have. And there's a common link between all these mass murders and all these other people. The common link is drugs. Because those drugs, these psychotropic drugs, open you up to devils. It's exactly what they do. They're very dangerous. Very dangerous. You can tell by the labels that they put on these drugs that they're absolutely dangerous. So it's, I mean, they tell you basically, in some words, what, what these drugs are going to do to people and how they're going to affect them. Now, reading, reading the side effects of these drugs should scare you enough not to take them. But most people don't read the side effects of drugs. We just take them because the doctor says to take them, right? So, so we just take them, you know? And again, I'm not telling anybody that's on psychotropics to jump off of them because that's dangerous. You need to, get, you need to uh, get with somebody who can help you uh, to get off of those, those drugs and get off in the right way. And not If you cold turkey do it, you're, you're, you're liable to hurt somebody or yourself. So I don't, I'm not telling you. I'm not a doctor, and I'm not telling you to do that either. What I'm telling you to do is we need to understand what these antidepressants do. What is the evidence of them? And how does that play into Mystery Babylon? 
How does it all play into this strong delusion in the end times and this spirit of mystery Babylon that is to come, that, that, or that is here, and that's going to that's gonna intensify? Let's pray. Father, Lord, we pray that you'd be with us now. Help us to understand these, these truths, Lord. Help us to look at the facts, Lord. And obviously we know the authority is the Word of God, and we see these facts that all tell us the same thing the Word of God is telling us to depart from these things and, and, and to stay away from sorcery. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. What does the Bible say again? We talked about David. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Again, we said that David's problem wasn't that he needed medicine. But some people will say to you, O preacher, those were Bible times. Things are way worse now. Those were Bible times back then. No, we are in Bible times. Amen. Last time I checked, revela the revelation hadn't been fulfilled yet. Right. Amen? It's not over yet. We're still in Bible time. We're still in there, right? In fact, we're in a very important part of that time. A time to stand and a time to not be deceived by the enemy. Amen. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand here. Is that, that we, there are subtle ways the serpent uses to deceive God's people. And this is one of the subtle ways that he has used. He has used the drug industry to deceive people and deceive some professing Christians and Christians as well. I'm going to tell you, you go to a doctor right now and you tell them, man, there's something wrong with me. I don't feel right. I don't have a lot of energy. What's the first thing they tell you? Well, you need, they don't tell you, go get some exercise or, or you know, what are you eating? What, what, what kind of diet do you have? You know, are you taking it? The, no, what do they tell you? I think you might need some depressants, antidepressants. I think you might, that, I'm, that's what they tell you. They'll run a blood test, they'll run some, well, they tell you, I think you're a depressed person. I think you need, that's why you don't have any energy. That's why you're not happy. You just, you need to, you need some medicine. That's what you need. You need some drugs. You need some antidepressants. And I'll tell you, when I was, when I was, before I was saved and I was a druggie, I didn't have any drugs. And I saw the drug man coming. I saw the dealer coming. I got a smile on my face. And when I did those drugs, I felt better. I was happy. I had, I, had, I had joy for a while. It wasn't Bible joy, but it was fleshly joy, right? Fleshly pleasure. But I liked it and I was happy. You tell a guy, he goes in, he's not feeling good. You go into a bar, you drink, a, you drink some booze. What happens to you? You start getting a little loose and you lighten up a little bit. And you're in a better mood, right? Why is that? Because that's what drugs do. That's what they do. Plants do it too. We talked about that in Lamentations chapter 3, verse number 15. He hath filled me with bitterness. He hath made me drunken with wormwood. It's a plant there, right? Drunken off of it. Drunken. You can be drunk off of marijuana. It doesn't have to be anything. It can be anything. Any of these concoctions that they make up with these drugs? Any that the witches make up? All the things that we talked about? All these drugs? Same way, you're drunken with those things when you take them. Now, I'm going to read you some of these. Let's look at antidepressants here. And I'm going to read you some of these. I call this sermon Psychotropic Suicide or Pharmaceutical Euthanasia. This is from drugwatch.com slash suicide, by the way. SSRI slash suicide. That's, that's the, the, the link for it. Patients who take selective serotonin reuptake inhib inhibitors, SSRIs, such as Prozac, how popular is Prozac? Right? They call it fluoxetine or whatever. I don't know how to say that, but that's what. Paxil, I've heard of that one, Paxil. Zoloft, heard of that too. Right? Many experience side effects such as violent behavior, mania or aggression, which, call, which can all lead to suicide. What begins is withdrawing from friends and activities and a loss of interest in work can escalate to harming oneself. In clinical trials and public use, there have been cases where antidepressant users have thought about, attempted, or committed suicide. Wait a minute. Did you, did you, did you hear what I just said? Yeah. Did you hear what I just said, though? It said, it said in clinic trials and public use, 
There have been cases where antidepressant users... Now, let me tell you something. The, your government is not above testing drugs on people that kill them. I hope you understand that. Or that seriously do very disgusting tests on people. Because just look up Kinsey, Alfred Kinsey, and you will find out you will find out the tests that they ran, okay, and the things that they did, all right? And they don't care if it hurts you, if it kills you. They don't care what it is. It's all about the money. It's all about dollars. It's all about depravity is what it's about. It's wicked. What's that? MK Ultra. that's right, same thing. Well, that's crazy talk, though, isn't it? Antidepressants have also been shown to have other dangerous side effects, including severe birth defects. When a woman takes the drug during pregnancy, in fact, dozens of women who took antidepressants during pregnancy have filed lawsuits after their children suffered birth defects. Antidepressants and incidents of suicide. Now listen, every year, 30,000 people in the United States die by suicide, and that number's been adjusted to about 40,000 now, I think. But uh, according to the National Institute of Mental Health, among those who are diagnosed with major depressive disorder, MDD, seven out of 100 men and one out of 100 women will commit suicide. For every suicide, there are 11 suicide attempts that are not successful. Prescribing antidepressants has become common practice. Listen to this. Oh. With 164 million prescriptions written for antidepressants in 2008. 164 million people. And that's the one that gets, those are the ones that get recorded. Those aren't the black market ones. You understand? Sales of SSRIs specifically increased by 32% from 2000 to 2004 to a combined total of $10.9 billion. Now, I'm just curious. You go from, I mean, that year 2000 was an interesting time period, 2000 to 2004. We had what? We had things like 9-11, terrorist scares, all these other things. If you don't think that's all one big psyop with, med with, with, with antidepressants and everything thrown into the mix of it, oh yeah. You better think again, friend, because that's exactly what it is. One huge plan is what that is. Because those things aren't accidents, folks. They, those numbers make sense. The nations are drunk. They're drunk with the riches from her sorceries in that mystery babble on the grade. Unfortunately, SSRIs, a relatively new class of antidepressants, have been associated with an increased risk of suicide. In tests of Prozac, Zoloft, Paxil, Celexia, Lexapro, and Luvux, Luvux, on children with major depressive disorder, obsessive compulsory disorder. Okay, I wanna help you out with these, okay? All right, th this is where they make this stuff up, okay? They made all these up, all right? They made all these up. It, some guys sat around and, and ladies sat around a big old table and they started making these things up and making these diseases up. They look at these symptoms and they make these mental disorders up. They give it a name. Bam, they come in with the drug. There you go. They got it. And that's how they do it. Yes, more money. And that is their testimony. That is how they do it. That is how they create these diseases. With major depressive disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, you're obsessively compulsive. And other psychiatric disorders, about 4% of patients experience suicidal thinking. Behavior or attempts in the placebo group, 2% of the participants experience similar problems. Antidepressants have also been linked to akathisia, akathisia, which is extreme restlessness. Listen to this. They give them these pills. Look what they do. Extreme restlessness and an inability to sit still. The discomfort can be so great, it, 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 just, it, it messes with their mind so much they can't sit still, they can't take it. The discomfort can be so great that suicide becomes a welcome alternative to feeling this type of agitation. They're, they're constantly just agitated by it. They're, they're sitting there and they're on these drugs and, and they're just, they're mad. They're agitated by them. They're agitated by just sitting there because they, they can't, they, they have to do something. 
Yeah, you work with them. That's right. Yeah. Right. From people being on medicine. You don't ask, right, but that's probably what they're on. I don't know why that guy's shaking back there, but he's probably on something. That's all I could say. Right. Listen to this. The suicide becomes a welcome alternative to feeling this type of agitation. In my opinion, they're being tormented by devils. Mm-hmm. Sometimes akathisia is misdiagnosed as worsening depression, so medication dosage is increased, causing the restlessness to persist. So they keep giving them more. They say, oh, you ain't got enough of it. You just need more of it. You ain't shaking enough and mad enough and agitated enough. Let's give you a little bit more of it and see what happens to you. By the way, my, my sister's experienced a lot of these symptoms right here. Yeah. At least one antidepressant can have a stimulant effect similar to ephetamines, which can lead to suicide. The FDA, official responsible, officially responsible for evaluating adverse drug effects during the approval process of Prozac, repeatedly warned that the drug could have this effect. So before, but, but we're going to go ahead and release it, but we just want you to know that it can do this to you. Well, if it does it, then why give people it? Money. Studies linking suicidal behavior and antidepressants. According to published material, there was only one suicidal act in the trials of Zoloft in children. Just one. I mean. Yet it was later revealed that the, the Food and Drug Administration had documented six suicidal acts in the trials, according to the Center for Drug Evaluation Research. Additionally, 17 children dropped out of the trial because of serious adverse events. That means that those 17 were trying to kill themselves, too. That's what that means. They just dropped out so they didn't have to have them part of the statistics. See what I mean? If you're giving drugs to people and they're having that much problem with it, you shouldn't be giving them the drugs. Makes sense, doesn't it? The Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency in London published data in 2003 revealing that not only was sertraline effective, ineffective, for major depressive disorder in children and adolescents, but in one trial, it increased the rate of self-harm compared to placebo. A 2003 study by the Committee of Safety of Medicines in the United Kingdom found that in tests of depressed children with SSRIs, more suicidal events, thoughts, self-harm, or attempts occurred than with placebo. Two years later, in 2005, MHRA, MHRA reviewed 477 controlled SSRI trials of adults and concluded that evidence does not rule out either a harmful or beneficial effect of SSRIs on suicide. Therefore, it is possible that SSRIs increase the incidence of suicide. They recommended larger trials to measure data. Yeah, let's pump more people up with these things. Another study documented in the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry found that 8.1% of 533 people admitted to the adult psychiatric inpatient service at Yale New Haven Hospital presented with psychosis or mania related to antidepressants. They're going nuts with them. In 2000, David Healy from the North Wales Department of Psychological Medicine reported on a random a randomized, double-blind crossover study of sertraline in, uh, in healthy volunteers who were not depressed. He found that many individuals developed adverse mental and neurological effects, including two severely disturbed cases. In one case, a 30-year-old woman's emotions changed, making her irritable and insensitive. She became preoccupied with suicide. In the other case, a 28-year-old woman developed feelings of aggression and threatened a teenage boy. 1990, the F now this is a timeline of what the FDA said about these SSRIs and these antidepressants. This is the information they released. Now, I want you to see this here. 1990, the FDA considered risk of antidepressants increasing suicidal in public hearing, but does not find enough evidence to change labels. 1996, six years later, FDA researcher writes to, to Pfizer to note the increased frequency of reports of suicide in young patients during Zoloft clinical trials. 
That was 1996. Seven years later, October 2003, FDA warns doctors that studies cannot rule out increased suicidal thinking in children taking antidepressants. December 2003, British drug regulators advised doctors not to use certain antidepressants in children. October 12, 2004, former FDA chief safety investigator testifies even before Prozac, Paxil, and Zoloft were on the U.S. market, he believed these drugs could cause mania, leading to violence. October 15, 2004, FDA orders all manufacturers of antidepressant medications to add a black box warning that they may increase suicide in children and adolescents. 2005, FDA sends out a public health advisory warning that all antidepressants increase suicidal behavior in adults and announcing that studies of the effects of antidepressants would be under review. FDA goes on to review 295 individual antidepressant trials of 77,000 adults with major depressive disorder. As a result, healthcare professionals are informed of the risk of suicide. 2006, FDA recommends that children should not take Zoloft as it increases suicidal thinking or behavior in one out of 50 young patients. FDA advises doctors to observe pediatric patients taking antidepressants once a week face to face. So they're giving them Zoloft and they're saying, hey, listen, but we'll come back. We'll, we got to see you once a week. Okay, folks, I want to tell you something. I want to help you out with something. It's not normal to go to the doctor once a week, okay? That's not normal. You shouldn't have to go to the doctor once a week unless you're, I mean, unless something weird's going on with you and you have some terminal illness or something like that where you have to do some things or you do some things like that. That'd be a different story. But for a child to just live in this life and be used to seeing some guy in a white coat for a mental illness as a child and you're giving him those drugs every week, every day, and he has to see a doctor every day of his or every week of his life once a week. That is not normal. It's madness. It's insane. Two thousand seven, FDA adds to the black box warning on certain antidepressants, cautioning that increased suicidal thoughts and behaviors are a possible side effect of the medications for adults ages eighteen to twenty four during initial treatment. Wait a minute. Now, all right, listen, 24 years ago, you said it was a problem with suicide. Why do you keep changing the labels? Why do you keep changing what you're putting on the labels and you only adjust it a little bit every, every five or six or seven years, but you're keeping the same medicine out there? If you have to warn people that this medicine is going to kill you, you shouldn't be giving it to people. Right. 2010. A study of nine years of data published in 2010 shows that the suicide risk is the same across SSR drug, SSRI drug types. So you're giving people that are depressed drugs that will make them want to kill themselves and be more depressed? Can I ask you a question? Do, are there any parents at all that are out there giving these children these drugs and adults are taking are they? Do they even know what's in these drugs? Have they even looked, or have they just trust some guy that's a doctor that has a white coat on that has a degree in something, and, and we just trust them with our lives so flippantly without studying anything out and knowing anything about it? Whatever happened to us being people that actually looked at something? Whatever happened to us being people that actually just looked at things and researched it ourselves to see what this was all about? And what I mean, now you have the internet where you can search just about anything you want to to find find out something about whatever medicine or whatever else you're taking. And the, this stuff is being given. It's being given to children and they're reacting to it. It's being given to adults. And we're seeing all these mass murders and all these other crazy things take place. Why? This is psychotropic suicide. That's why. Check this out. I want to give you some more statistics here. By the way, the Bible says they'd be mad, right? They'd be drunk. That's what we have. We have a nation of doped up people. 
they admit that they're on mental illness drugs. I mean, they admit it. They people will admit it to you. You be on the street, and someone will tell you they're on stuff. You know. Well, listen to this. You ever wonder? You know. Okay. You ever you ever hear this? We we play this scenario, right? Where, brother Paul, the military wouldn't turn on U.S. citizens, right? I mean, they would never. They would never do that, right? Your military would never do that. Right. If you label them as the, if, if you're labeled as the enemy, like Brother Paul said, then yeah, they would turn on you. Okay, they would. And you say how? Well, if you pump enough psychotropics into people after they're already gone through mind control stuff, because by the way, the military. That's why I don't recommend anybody, any Christian, going into it. Because once you go into it, they if you go into the military, they they basically they use the same techniques the Jesuits use. Okay, but they use mind control techniques and they strip you of your individuality and you just work as a team and that's what you do. you work together and whatever the goal is you accomplish it no matter what whatever your orders are you do it no matter what so all they do is just what's that though i be the lone survivor that's right so what do you do they just point them into a direction to say sick them that's who you're going after that's the enemy well how could this be accomplished in america then i'll tell you how i'm gonna give you some statistics here this is from naturalnews.com. 3% of the U.S. Army is on prescription medications, and nearly a quarter of those are on psychotropic drugs. Right. Right, when they come back, it's right. When they break their programming and they're back and they're out in the main world, then they take their drug, they take their gun, they give them drugs and they take their guns away from them. Mm -hmm. In 2010, the Pentagon spent $280 million on psychiatric drugs. Do you feel safe? You feel safe? $280 million on psychiatric drugs the Pentagon spent. Number three, there are now over 8,000 suicides each year by U.S. soldiers and veterans. That's over 22 a day. 33% of those suicides are attributed to medication side effects. That means medications are killing more U.S. soldiers and veterans than Al-Qaeda or any other, or ISIS or any other thing they invent. Oops. Yeah. See that? The boogeyman, whatever new boogeyman they have. That's right. 500% more soldiers abuse prescription drugs than illegal street drugs. Under the Obama administration, the number of veterans waiting for VA care has risen from 11,000 in 2009 to 245,000 today. Yeah. More active duty soldiers die from suicide than from combat. 349 dead last year. The number of prescriptions for Ritalin and Adderall written for active duty soldiers has increased 1,000% in the last five years. Well, you got to try to forget that stuff somehow, don't you? Right? They got to try to forget the kill. Man, you, you don't listen to me. If you think I trust them, you're nuts, okay? I've been out on the street with Brother Paul there, and we stood when some crazy, psyched up kid came up and was like jumping on Paul and being like, Where'd you get that backpack? And where'd you get this? And, and, and trying to accuse Paul of being a fake soldier like he was never in the military and all this other stuff. And he, and he just starts going nuts and he's wanting to like beat us down right there. And he's going psycho right in front of us. Why? Over a backpack. Right. Right. Why? Because they're doped up, that's why. What do you think you have to give a man to try to forget about killing people? Going into villages and wiping people out, killing babies and children and everything. Raping and murdering. What do you think can make a man forget that or try to forget that? What do you think they do? Well, they, I'm depressed. Well, of course you're depressed. Of course you are. You need Jesus. You need to be forgiven of your sins. Your problem is spiritual. You've got the weight of sin and murder and death on your hands. And you can only get free from that through Jesus Christ. 
Even after you're saved, it causes problems. Look at Paul. What did he say? Paul said he had to, he had to forget about those things which were behind. You can see it in Paul's words when he's lamenting in the Word of God, when he's lamenting over the fact that he, that he killed the Lord's servants. Do you see what the blood that was on his hands? And he said, I held the cloak when they murdered Stephen. I held his clothes. And I was there and I was part of it. He was a murderer, but he, he was forgiven. But he said, I, I can't think about those things I did before. I got to press on. I can't, I can't concentrate on those things, man. I got to move forward. Because if I concentrate on those things, I'm in trouble. I won't get anywhere with the Lord. You can't run a race looking behind you. For every active duty service member who dies in battle, 25 veterans die by suicide. Yep. Only 1% of Americans have served in the Middle East, but veterans of combat there make up 20% of all suicides in the United States. The suicide rate of active duty soldiers in the Civil War was only 9 to 15 per 100,000 soldiers. The suicide rate of active duty U.S. soldiers in the Middle East is 23 per 100,000. And casualty rates were far higher in the Civil War, meaning the Civil War was more psychologically traumatic. Yeah, I mean, no kidding, you were killing your own brethren, your own brothers, you know, your own countrymen. In the Korean War, the suicide rate among active duty military soldiers was only 11 per 100,000. To date, the Pentagon has spent more than a billion dollars on psychiatric drugs, making it one of the largest customers of Big Pharma. Mm -hmm. In 2010, over 213,000 active duty military personnel were taking medications considered high risk by the Pentagon. In the years since the Iraq War began, twice as many soldiers of the Texas Army National Guard have died of suicide than in combat. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta calls military suicides an epidemic. No kidding, one that you're causing. Now listen, folks, I've gathered these facts with some hours and hours of study, okay? And I'm not done yet, but in the hours and hours of study, you trying to tell me that Congress doesn't know this stuff? You trying to tell me the federal drug, they're the ones that put the reports out. So why are they doing it? Money and sorcery. They're making men mad. Chaos, that's right. Out of chaos comes what? Order, they say. The new world order. Novus, Novus Ordo Seclorum. What's that? Yeah, that's right. All, of all the branches of the military, the Army has the highest number of suicides each year, almost 400% more than the Marines. Most active duty soldiers who take psychiatric medications consume a combination of three to five prescriptions. Aren't you glad you have Jesus, Brother Paul? Aren't you glad that he saved you? He washed you in his own blood and he changed you and made you a new man? Mm -hmm. The use of prescription medications by active duty soldiers is largely unregulated. Soldiers are given a bottle of meds and sent into combat. If they run out of meds, they are given a refill, no questions asked. Wait a minute. So you're telling me that you send these people out there with those drugs and go war? And you're wondering why these people do the things they do? Why? No, you know why they're doing it, because you're sending them to do it, and you're giving them the dope to do it with. Because you're trying to erase their conscience. And my friend, if you can hear this, whoever hears this, wherever you are, there is no man that can give you a drug to erase your conscience. You will remember it, and you must get forgiven by Jesus Christ, because he is the only way and the only one that can forgive you. No one else can forgive you. No amount of dope can make it go away, friend. I promise you, no amount of liquor can make it go away. You've got to be forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing will make you forget. But you can be forgiven. 
the use of prescription medications. The mainstream media says the answer to lowering, lowering suicides of veterans is to take away their guns so they cannot shoot themselves. This is the logical equivalent to trying to fix your car's engine by removing the check engine light. Listen, folks, there was a soldier up in, there was a lady that I was at the DMV a long time ago when I bought, I don't remember which car it was. It's been, a, it's been about four or five years. She was telling me that her, that her, her son had postpartum or whatever, well, no, what do you call that? Um, post-traumatic, yeah, post-traumatic. Post-traumatic syndrome, yeah. Yep, that's, that's what, after coming back from the war. They didn't give him any, they gave him drugs probably and all that kind of stuff too, too obviously, to do that. But he didn't have guns. You know what he did? He just burnt the house down. You, don't matter what weapon you have. When crazy's crazy. It don't, it don't matter. Listen, folks, I've seen crazy, and crazy's crazy. It don't matter what you have. You can be crazy. Listen, you can kill somebody with a rock. You can kill somebody with anything you want to, man. You can poison them. You can... I don't want to tell you how. Anyway, there's a lot of things you can do. Anyway, I don't want to give anybody any ideas, but, but uh, there's, 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 I just don't want to do that. But uh, there's, there's a lot of ways that people can die, okay? There's a lot of ways you can kill people, all right? A lot of ways. The Pentagon is initiating new research in 2013 to try to figure out why psychiatric medications cause soldiers to commit suicide. The FDA already told you why they do. So what is this, another way to spend more money, to play the game, to keep people doped up? Listen, folks, that's what it's all about. That's exactly what it's about. Why do soldiers commit suicide on psychiatric drugs? I don't know, because it leads them to them. Because you're opening up gateways to devils. That's why. The research involves tracking brain activity by attaching electrodes to the skull. One third of military suicides are committed by soldiers who have never seen combat. No, it's drug related. That's right. That's right. In the last year, the military wrote over 54,000 prescriptions for Suroquel to soldiers, and all those prescriptions were off label meaning the intended use has never been approved by the FDA as safe or effective. So if they just want some drugs to make them feel good, they just give them to them. Why? Because you have to to get somebody to kill people like that, okay? You have to. I mean, you were told, listen to me, folks. You have a military that's going overseas, stomping over every uh, sovereign ground they can find, over, over every border you can, going in and killing people that are living in their homes and just living every day. You are taking over sovereign nations and you are going through there. And, you're t and you tell them, hey, you remember 9-11? Yeah, those two planes were in the building? Yeah, so let's go to Iraq. I mean, folks, you've got to be on drugs to make that connection. I mean, how could you, I get, right? I mean, think about it. You have to be doped up. Why did Saddam Hussein, was he in the plane with some of his men? Nah, he did not do that. What, what did he do? What did Saddam do? What was his part in it? Nothing, really. We just want to kill somebody. You're exaggerating. No, I'm not. No, I'm not exaggerating. Neither would I joke about that. You know why? Because your president, George W. Bush... He stood up at, a, at one of those meetings where they all come together and they have comedy and they, they're laughing about it. And they're laughing about it. He goes, still looking for those WMDs. <laughs> and everybody started laughing. Democrats and Republicans and they're all congressmen and senators and they're all laughing. <laughs> all those people died and you're laughing about it. You're, you're laughing. Why? Because you're a Luciferian devil. That's why. Yeah. Well, we got to get them first before they get to us. Well, since when does Iraq have a navy that can send a bunch of people over here? When did, they, when did they have such an advanced navy that they could send fleets over here to get us? I'm not trying to get into this, but my point is, do you see how, how if you give somebody enough drugs, you can get them to do whatever you want? Because people are actually convinced that they're actually defending their country, stomping over... What, I mean, Saddam Hussein, yeah, he was a, he was a piece of garbage. I, I, everybody knows that. He was a wicked man, Okay. 
So is the king of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> right? So is a lot of people. So is Barack Obama. I always thought it was weird that somebody named Saddam Hussein died and then we had a Barack Obama in the office like right after that. Do you, do you find it funny that somebody with a Muslim name is the President of the United States? Barack Hussein and Saddam Hussein died and then we have a Barack Hussein Obama. Now, did you find that weird? I just find that's very weird. Barry? That's Barry. Barry. Dr. Bart Billings, a retired Army colonel and former military psychologist, refers to psychiatric drugs as a chemical lobotomy for soldiers. What's a lobotomy? That's where they take that, they take a, a pick, basically, right? They go in there and they, the, is it the frontal lobe? Is that what it is? Of your brain, Brother Russ, is that what it is? And they, and they, they sear it, basically, so it has no feeling or whatever? You have a real way with words, Brother Make it kind of mushy a little bit, right? So then, so then there's nothing there, right? It cuts off those emotions or whatever. Well, now they just use chemicals to do that. They don't have to do that with them. They just, chemicals do the same thing. Right. Next, children are given these drugs. Psychotropic drugs are prescribed to children in the United States. Listen to this. This was a report done by Europe and or overseas, comparing overseas and everything. You can find this at naturalnews.com. Psychotropic drugs are prescribed to children in the United States at three times the rate of children in Europe. According to one of the first studies to rigorously comp compare such prescription patterns between different countries, there is significantly greater use of atypical anti antipsychotics and selective serotonin reuptake SSRIs type antidepressants for children for child mental health treatment in the U.S. than in Western Europe. Why, do, why are we using all this dope? Because we're Babylon, that's why. We're Babylon. We just export it all around the world. Don't worry. We'll get to you, and if you don't do what we say, we'll just drop some democracy on you and some liberty. Oh, you want a little bit of liberty? Oh, we'll give you some. You want some democracy? That's what we do best. We'll export democracy. That's what they did to Saddam Hussein. He didn't play ball, so what they do to him? Drop some democracy on that country. That's what I'm talking about. Don't listen to us. We'll give you some. You want, I, don't, I, I don't like what democracy looks like, Brother Paul. Yeah, we sent some freedom. They hate us for our freedom, so we just gave it all away. That's, they hate us for our freedom, so we just went ahead and gave it all to them, so now they don't have to worry about it anymore. Right? Zito and colleagues from, university, from the University of Maryland School of Pharmacy examined the prescriptions of psychotropic drugs, including stimulants such as Ritalin and antidepressants such as Prozac, to more than 600,000 people under the age of 20 in the United States, Germany and the Netherlands between 99 and 2000. They found that 6.7% of children in the United States, 2.9% of those in the Netherlands, and 2% of those in Germany were taking at least one psychotropic drug at the time. Twice as much here. Among U.S. children between the ages of five and nine, what does a five-year-old need psychotropic drugs for? It's called, you need a father and a mother and discipline and guidance. Yeah. But no, we want to we give our children the education system. And when the education system says, your child's acting up in class, okay, well, I'll take him to the doctor. So then the, 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 the school nurse, maybe you should take them to the doctor and get them on drugs. So they go to the doctor. Maybe this will help you sit still in class. Nah, when I was a kid, I know what helped me sit still in class. It worked, too. Yeah, same thing that would work today. <laughs> helped me sit still. <laughs> Not at first. It kind of hurt. But then, then, then I sat still. <laughs> you don't even need a prescription. You already got a prescription from the Word of God for it, all right? Among U.S. children, between the ages of five and nine, the, the rate was more than 8% of four times the European rate. The use of more than one drug at a time by U.S. children was also widespread. 
Looking specifically at different classes of medications, the researchers found that U.S. children were prescribed antidepressants and stimulants at three or more times the rate of children in Europe, and antipsychotics at between one and five and 2.2 times the European rate. In the United States, more than 75% of psychotropic drugs uh, were prescribed to children off-label for uses not approved by the FDA. Do you realize what that that means that means that they have no basis for giving them these drugs they're giving them to whatever behavioral uh situations they come across they're just giving them drugs for it let's just see how you act on this i mean i'm sorry but i can only compare it to my experience in life and what i've been through with this stuff okay it's like me being on the street and 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 smoking weed or something like that and when somebody would come up to me and be like hey you want to try shrooms what's that do yeah sure that's that's what they did. Let's see how this let's see how this pill makes you act, kid. What's that? Mike Moloch putting in the fire. That's right. Listen, your children don't need a pill. They need parents. They need Jesus Christ. They probably need less sugar too, and they need more discipline. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. also says, withhold not correction from the child. For if thou beatest him with a rod, he shall not die. I seem to remember some kids dying off of some psychotropics, though. I don't know who that is. Somebody's looking in here, though. Hmm? Yeah, that's right. The Bible says, Withhold not correction from the child, for thou beatest with the rod, he shall not die. But what is causing the dramatic spike in the number of suicides among psychi psychiatric outpatients in one of Illinois' most prestigious psychiatric programs? That's what researchers would like to find out, through a, though a number of observes, observers think the phenomenon could be related to the medications themselves. Well, duh! I mean, how is that so hard to understand? Officials with Northwestern Memorial Hospital, which is located in Chicago, said while they're concerned about this disturbing trend, they offered no further details about the hospital's response, nor any specific numbers of outpatients who have committed suicide, except to say they have taken steps to identify patients at greater risk in order to increase the already high level of support provided to all our patients. The Chicago Tribune said sources it spoke with claim seven hospital outpatients since December have killed themselves. The paper said it was able to identify five of those seven through interviews and government records. The Bible says, Thou shalt beat him with a rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. Now here's another one from National News. A Swedish writer was acu has, a has accused the National Board of Health and Welfare of covering up evidence suggesting a connection between psychiatric drugs and suicide. Under a recent law, Swedish health care providers must fill out reports on all suicides committed by patients under their care or within four weeks of a health care visit. Their reports are then sent to the NBHW, which complies, compiles and analyzes them. Recently... That NBHW released the first report analyzing 367 suicides recorded in 2006. Not a single word is written about the most compelling fact. Well over 80% of persons killing themselves were treated with psychiatric drugs. Hmm? Really? What did he want? Oh, yeah. My friend. Oh, well. According to data received via Freedom of Information Act request, more than 80% of 367 suicides have been receiving psychiatric medications. More than half of these were receiving antidepressants, while more than 60% were receiving either antidepressants or antipsychotics. There is no mention of these either in the NBHW paper or in major Swedish media reports about the healthcare suicides. Why? Why, Why is this hidden? Why is there a media black on this? Why do you know what kind of gun this young man had? And why aren't major news organizations reporting what kind of drugs he was on? But why do you know what kind of handgun? Because it's convenient for you to know what kind of handgun he has. 
Because if you know what kind of handgun he has, then you can fight against it and tell people they can't have guns. So we can take guns away. No, I got a better idea. Why don't you take drugs away? It is important to note that nearly every school shooting that has happened in the United States over the last decade has been conducted by young males who are taking antidepressant drugs. Everyone. The drugs not only cause suicidal behavior, they also seem to promote extreme violence toward other individuals. In most school shooting cases, the young men committing the violence also committed suicide after killing classmates and teachers. These are all classic signs of antidepressant use. Well, how do psychotropics work then? How does a drug work itself? So why does it make you? And I've got to hurry up here. Um, antidepressants are psychotropic drugs most commonly work by attaching themselves to the neurotransmitters in the brain. Neurotransmitters are the naturally occurring substances in the brain that occupy the space between the synapses of the nerve endings and allow the electrical energy to jump the gap between nerves. Of the 30 or so neurotransmitters that have been identified, researchers have discovered associations between clinical depression and the function of three primary ones, serotonin, norepinephrine, thank you, epinephrine, and dopamine. I know that one. <laughs> yeah. These three neurotransmitters function within structures of the brain that regulate emotions, reactions, distress, and the physical, dri physical drives of sleep, appetite, and sexuality. You ever heard that concept of playing with somebody's mind? That's what they do with these drugs. They are literally playing with your mind. That's what they're doing. Antidepressants are chemically engineered to raise the level of serotonin in the brain in order to elevate the mood of the individual. Since most of the production of serotonin occurs in the pineal gland, oh, what, 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 now what happened? Oh, now we just opened up something else. We, in essence, in this discussion, now you're opening up that third eye. Right? Now you're opening up third eye. Now we're getting to the heart of it. What's it doing? What is this medicine doing? It's opening you up to devils. It's opening up that third eye that every cult, witches, and everybody else want to open up. That third eye. Right? That third eye to to get you into that spirit realm, right? To break free of that spirit realm. Man, I gotta hurry, okay. The pineal gland, this tiny cone-shaped gland subsequently becomes the target of the drugs. The pineal gland is located in the diametrical center of the brain and has been touted by mystics as the organ of spiritual perception. Wait, so you're saying these drugs open up them to spiritual perception so they can see things? Yeah, well, yeah, Timothy O'Leary. I mean, every, Timothy Leary, every, everybody talked about that. I mean, sure, mystics, everybody, druggies, everybody knows that. When certain of these drugs are ingested or injected into a person's body, they stimulate this gland to produce a euphoric effect in their mood and thinking patterns. When we start to understand how the pineal gland affects our minds, we will also begin to see why these drugs are so dangerous. This little gland sits directly beneath the two brain halves at the top of the spinal cord and works in conjunction with the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland to collectively control most of the endocrine secretions in the human body. What's that mean? Well, mystics have long believed that if the pineal gland is triggered, it can catapult the person to a higher spiritual realm. Wait a minute, are you saying that like when witches use drugs to call up devils, when yoga people clear their mind and make their mind empty so they can receive transmissions from spirits, when Joseph Smith would use his magic and conjure up spirits, when, when Muhammad would, when all these other people would, and they would get involved in the spirit world, they would make contact with the spirit world, when Aleister Crowley use these drugs in his magic and he used them and he said he would open they would open up their third eye to a different realm and get into the fourth dimension into the spirit realm right remember that are you saying preacher that these people that are walking around on these drugs are tapping into their third eye and they are opening up something in a spirit world yeah yeah uh-huh that's it you got it Mystics have long believed that if the pineal gland is triggered, it can catapult the person to a higher spiritual realm. Psychotropic drugs target this gland 
and endeavor to raise the mood levels of depressed people up to a higher realm. When these drugs activate the pineal gland, the door is open to a spirit realm where the demons are anxiously waiting to invade the body. You believe that, don't you? You, believe demon, you understand demon possession, right? Some of you have seen it before. Adolf Hitler was a major believer in this theory and used drugs frequently to enter the spirit world and to get his direction. LSD was developed in 1938 by Albert Hoffman during the Third Reich reign and Hitler rise to power and insanity. The following quote shows that Hitler used these mind-altering drugs and the negative legacy left behind provides a vivid example of the effects of them. History records that he suffered from depression and ended up committing suicide. No, we don't believe that he committed suicide, though, but because there's reports that he was found in the mountains in, in, uh, with his girlfriend. What's that? FBI said in their reports they released. Remember that? Did you see that, Brother Russ, about six months ago? FBI released that information and said that, no, he lived out his life in, the, in Austria or somewhere, or where was he? South America, he just lived out his life there. Well, I believe that. Sure, why not? They can make anybody disappear if they want to and go wherever they want them to go. Hitler was enthusiastic enough to enhance his occult powers further. He was already using some medication, meditation techniques he learned back in the East, but, but that was too slow of a progress for him. Ernest Pretzky, a book dealer, introduced Hitler to a psychedelic drug containing mescaline and peyote. This produced clairvoyant visions that made Hitler believe he had opened the door to the reins of the supernatural powers, powers he could use for his own purpose. Of course it did. I mean, he, uh, plus he followed the writings of Helena Blavatsky, which all worked together, by the way. In reality, using drugs to raid mood, raid, raise mood levels is not only dangerous, but it is a form of idolatry that substitutes pharmaceuticals for what only the Holy Spirit can accomplish in the true sense. When people enter this euphoric state, they are much more prone to erratic behavior because of the openness of their minds to the influence of demons. Look at this report on the effects of psychotropic drugs on the pineal gland. They say this, the possibility of the pineal gland involvement as a part of the neuroendocrine endocrine, endocrine dysfunction in some of the psychiatric diseases has received special attention in recent years. The discovery of a cascade of receptors and the action of many psychoactive drugs on the pineal gland supports that concept that the pineal gland can be considered as a suitable model system for assessing the action of psychotropic drugs. Psychotropic drugs, particularly antidepressants, both monamine oxidase inhibitors, when administered either to animals or to patients suffering from depressive illness, affects the pineal gland function and melatonin concentration. This raises the possibility that the beneficial effects of these drugs may relate to their ability to alter the pineal gland function and melatonin secretion. The occurrence of seasonal affective disorders and their response to bright light treatment implicate melatonin as a biochemical marker. For these diseases states, in view of these facts, it can be suggested that the pineal gland does play an important role in etiology of mental disease, especially affective disorders. So, Right, you're doing what all devil-possessed people do. You're acting like a devil, right? That's what you're doing. Psychotropic drug manufacturers purposely target the pineal gland in order to alter its function. The, these SSRIs change the brain's activity in this vital gland by increasing its melatonin secretion. In effect, limiting the uptake of serotonin takes the low spots out of a person's mood. But melatonin, on the other hand, raises the level of brain activity to a euphoric state. The goal of these drugs is to balance out the low spots by raising the whole level of the brain activity. Whether it is Prozac, Ritalin, or self-prescribed illicit drugs, the effect is basically the same. In layman's terms, it is to attain a high through a process of changing the actions of these neurotransmitters. I'm telling you folks, you're messing with devils when you're on it. You are, you, are, you are communicating with devils on this medication. That's what's happening. I got to hurry because I want to finish this. My, I want to give you some testimonies here. My 16-year-old daughter is currently taking four different antidepressants. She is currently taking, this is from a website here. Uh, she is currently taking Cymbalta, Lamotrine, Seroquel, and Ziprazidin. I don't know. She has been depressed for a few years, but it suddenly got worse since she started taking Ziprazidin. Ziprazidin, whatever, something like that. She has been taking it for about two weeks now. Listen to this. 
she informs us that she is hearing voices telling her to harm herself. By the way, my sister, my 40-year-old sister gives the same testimonies. I'm telling you, she admits that there's, there's like voices telling her to do something wrong, remember? Over and over again, she told you, Dad, I'm hearing these voices. And everybody says, no, you're not hearing any voices. No, you're not. Yes, she is. Yes, she is hearing voices. See, that's what the devil does. He preys on the weak. He is a coward. How do you know, preacher? Because you take that old sword and the Bible says he will flee from you. He picks on the weak, but you take that sword of the Spirit out, he's going to get out of there. He's going to leave. He's a backbiter. He said, this lady goes on to say, she informed us that she is hearing voices telling her to harm herself. She has experimented in cutting in the past. But yesterday, she did it, to, did, did it to the extreme, resulting in numerous cuts to her arm. I mean, what are these people thinking? In taking these four medications together, is taking these four medications a detriment to her mindset? Please help. Okay, Mark chapter 5, please. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5 and verse number 2. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tomb, out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Well, wait a minute. You're saying she's hearing voices and she's cutting herself? Telling her to harm herself? Who's telling her to do that? Devils. Devils. She's opened up her third eye. She has opened doorways to devils. There's people that have been a part of deliverance ministries or that say that they're saved, but some of these people still have those devils in. They're still taking this medication. They got gateways to devils. They got doors open to these devils. They're opening up their self to these devils. I mean, I remember my sister saying the same things about one, and she's mentally handicapped, okay? But she didn't ever talk like that before and say things like that. Never. Talk about wanting to harm herself and harm my father. Why would you want to harm somebody that's loved you your whole life? Doesn't make sense, does it? Sure it does if you understand where it's coming from. It's devils. That's right. Since March 2000, here's another one. Since March 2003, I've been diagnosed with OCD. Yeah. BPD. Yep. How do you know these? It's really creepy that you know all these, Lee. And, ma and, major, and major depressive disorder with psychosis all by different docs. I'm currently taking 40 milligrams of Prozac, 15 milligrams of Zyprexa, and one milligram of Xanax by panic disorder. My panic disorder and OCD have gotten much better. But the voices I am hearing have not gotten any better. Can these voices be caused by BPD or do I have something else like schizophrenia? I never heard any voices until I started an antidepressant. By the way, you want to see violence? Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. What happened? They suicided them pigs. Right? They suicided those pigs. Jesus is the cure. Getting the devil cast out of you. That's the only cure. She said she never had those voices before until she started taking the medicine. There's another medicine called lithium that can cause severe, several side effects. And some of them may become serious. They include loss of coordination, excessive thirst, Frequent urination, blackout, seizures, slurred speech, fast, slow, irregular, or pounding heartbeat, 
hallucinations, seeing things or hearing voices that do not exist. I disagree with you. The voices do exist. And you are seeing things that are real. What's that? You've taken that before? You want That made you want to kill yourself? Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, so you have experience with that, so you understand that. Okay? He took that before. Right. Okay. It... What's that? Yeah. You didn't see a rooster? Is that what you said? I didn't get it from a doctor. Oh, you didn't get it from a doctor. Right, right, right. Yep. Doesn't, they don't care. Um, <laughs> swelling of the eyes, face, lips, tongue, throat, hands, feet, ankles, or lower legs. Now, I'm going to read you what, what one psychiatrist is saying here. This is very dangerous, too. Instead of denying the delusions and hallucinations experienced by her patients, this, this psychotherapist named Jessica Arnella, she says, she describes a transformative and healing power gained by accepting these voices as real. You can't make this up. You can't make this any easier for me either, okay? Clinical psychology, she says, hearing voices is not in itself a significant risk factor for violence. <laughs> yeah, she hears them all the time. Under most conditions, even command hallucinations do not predict violence. Generalized hostility and substance abuse are stronger predictors. People frequently hear voices telling them what to do and do not follow them. After all, you tell your patients to do all kinds of things and they ignore you too. She's saying, listen to the voices and talk to them and communicate with them. Yeah, we are. She said, voices may be positive and helpful. Or to a witch, that's the same thing a witch told us. That's exactly, some of those spirit guides are nice. You're friendly. You should talk to them. You should seek them out. Yeah, a lot of psychiatrists are, well, they are, they're sorcerers. We know that. Yep, and a lot of them are witches too. Yeah, exactly. Now, listen, sometimes voices may be experienced in a very positive way. That was really good timing, Lee. <laughs> that was classic right there. <laughs> As a form of instinct, intuition, are you ready? Or guidance. She's telling you, take the medicine and you have your spiritual guides. They can give you guidance. And trust your own self for the judgment. You're telling crazy people that are devil-possessed to listen to voices in their head. For example, she says, on the morning of September 11, 2001, a woman reported hearing a voice that said, get off this train now. She decided to exit to the subway one station before her usual one near the World Trade Center. Don't you wish somebody that you had a spirit guide to keep you from harm? I'm not kidding you. She used the word spirit guide. She said, I'll read it to you again. Don't you wish sometimes that you had a spirit guide to keep you from harm? Hearers may learn strategies to be more empathetic. <laughs> empathetic. What is that? <laughs> I can't even say that. E-M-P-A-T-H-I-C. <laughs> Empathetic, whatever, but also more assertive with the voices. So you're going to start commanding these voices, is what you're saying. Yeah, empathetic and assertive. Yin yang, right? Right? Thinking of voices as though they are family members. Some pleasant, critical, provocative, distant, Chattering or argumentative can help a hearer to make sense of them. Understanding the nature of a voice or voices can help hearers set limits, particularly with abusive voices, such as asking the voice to speak more respectfully or constructively. I'm not making it up. I will show you. I'm not. Her name is... Jessica Arnella, PhD, practices in New York City. Yes. There's a whole voices network. 
No, listen to me. There's a whole, there's a whole, listen, there's a whole voices network, okay? And in that voices network, all right, in that voices network, they talk about people that hear voices. They have a whole group of people that come together and they're hearing these voices. So folks, what are they doing? Well, they've already admitted that they're playing around with the pineal gland, which every cult wants you to do, to open up that third eye. The charismatics like to smack you in the forehead, right? They want to open up that third eye. Um, you've got slain in the spirit. You've got all that stuff. Then you've got what? How many cults do that? How many of the, of, the, of the mystic religions want you to open up your third eye? And now you have doctors that are systematically prescribing prescriptions that are going around. What are they doing? All of these people are in a different spiritual realm. They're operating with devils. That's what they're doing. Right? They're using them as channels. That's exactly what they're doing. Right? Exactly. Right. So then what do they do? They bring these people in. They bring them in. And what do they do? Well, these people either commit suicide because the voices tell them to. And finally, they're sick of hearing those voices in their head. They keep telling them, why don't you just kill yourself? 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 You should just do it. It'd be easy. You can do it. You can get it done with you. Just do it. Just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. Come on. You uh, constantly over and over again. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. Come on. You know you want to do that. Go, go do this. Go do this bad. Go do this bad. And while you have the gateway open, while the medicine is still being, while the drugs are being taken, the penal gland is still being used, you can't close that door. You can't pray and say, God, close this door because you're keeping it open. You understand? You've got the door open to these psychotropics. So what is the only thing that people do when they're tired of hearing the voices? When they're tired of hearing them, what do they do? They go do whatever they have to do and then they kill themselves. My brother had a friend, and I'm done here, but my brother had a friend in Illinois, or no, excuse me, in Minnesota here. And this young man was on antidepressants, okay? And he was a, he was a high school all-star wrestler okay i mean he was like what do you call that state champion and i mean he was just like the best he was just like one of the best his father was an olympic alternate wrestler here in minnesota his father was an olympic alternate and and uh so very strong kid and everything like that but he got on antidepressants and gained a bunch of weight and he he had this girlfriend when he was in high school and they were they were in love or whatever like they call it, which is lust but anyway that's what they were and then she left him and they separated and he went off she went off to college he went off here well then he had written her and started corresponding with her okay and they said they wanted to meet well when she met him he was a lot bigger you know he wasn't like he was before all chiseled out and in good shape and everything and basically she treated him really cruelly she was very mean to him and she said why don't you just go kill yourself and this kid got off his antidepressants or started not taking them correctly, the drugs. And his mom and dad went into his room, and he was really distraught, went into his room, and he had a knife in his hand like this. And he was stabbing himself like this. And he was saying over and over, it's too late, Mom, don't worry about me, Mom, it's too late, it's too late, it's too late. And he kept stabbing himself like that. And his mom tried to get the, the knife out of his hands and slit her hands all up and cut her hands. Her dad, a big wrestler came in there trying to hold him down there was blood all over the walls as he walked by there was just blood from everything caked in that in that poor family's house the blood of their son all over the place right that kid wasn't that type of kid no that kid got on some drugs got on some antidepressant drugs And the mom and dad are like, we don't even what's we don't even understand why he did what he did. I mean, and the, because he had the, he had a very traumatic thing happen with somebody that he really liked that he had a lot of feelings for before, and they hurt him badly. And the drugs, and the devils. He had to end his life. He just had to end it. It's nothing to play with. This is not a game. And this is why we want, and I know, I know Pastor Cooley preaches some unusual messages. I get it. I, I get it. I know. There's some preachers that do all expositional preaching, and I'm not against them. 
I'm saying I know, I understand that. But you know what? If one or two people can be warned about this, if just one or two people can be warned about this and wake up out of that and understand you cannot serve God and take those drugs, you cannot serve God and be a part of that, because you know what it leads to? Suicide. They lead to death. You're opening yourself up to devils. And they are using, every, we showed you already today, every major cult, every witch's coven, all of them use those drugs. Shaman wizards, all of them use those drugs. Sorcerers, they all use them. And now you have sorcerers with uniforms on or with white jackets on, right? Doctors with a name tag on that make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. We won't even talk about the amount of money that they're given from drug companies the underwriting that's done for drug companies. For instance, and I got, I got to stop it. For instance, I want you to think about this one thing. All the major tests of what these drugs do are, are, are these tests that are done are underwritten by the, the pharmaceutical companies themselves. Think about it. We have to learn, again, if you're on a psychotropic, I'm not telling you to jump off of it. I'm telling you to get help with getting off of it. Seek some counsel. Find a holistic doctor that understands medicine and everything else that's trained, that understands it, and, and get some help. Get some help and get off. But don't just rip yourself off of them because you can commit suicide as well or you can harm someone else. I'm not a doctor. I don't claim to be, but I am a preacher. And I'll tell you what, I'll help you a lot more than them guys will. I'll tell you the truth. That you're interacting with devils and those voices you're hearing those are real voices. Don't ever let anybody tell you they're not real. They are absolutely real, and they are devils that are telling you to do things to your body to harm yourself. Why? Because the devil, because they're all about death. All they that hate me, said God, love death. And that's what it's about. It's about death. So now we have churches full of people. We have, we have churches full of people that are so doped up. Do you think these people aren't going to accept the Antichrist kingdom when it comes in? Look, they're already accepting the sodomites. Why? Because you've got a bunch of doped up people that don't care about anything else. They're zombies. They don't know right from wrong anymore. They're deceived. God help us. These psychotropes have killed more people than you can ever imagine, and they're going to kill more from the military on. And we've got to stand up. We've got to be firm. We've got to understand these mental illnesses. No, there's, the Word of God tells you about, about illnesses. Okay? It tells you the truth about them. I know you say, Preacher, do you believe in bipolar? No, I don't. Do you believe in these other mental ADD, ADHD, or whatever, whatever you have? No. No, I don't. No. I believe there's devils out there, and I believe this medication is being used, but I'm not saying all medication ever. I'm talking about, we're talking about psychotropics. We're talking about things that kill people. Psychotropic suicide. It is a pharmaceutical euthanasia. Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth of it. Lord, I just pray that you dismiss us with your blessing, Lord, and your strength and your mercy. And Lord, we thank you, Father, for loving us. Thank you for, for showing us the truth in the scriptures. Protect us from evil, I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.